My name is Bernard Hoekman. I'm a professor at the Robert Schumann Center for Advanced Studies at the European University Institute, which is based in Florence, Italy, where I run a program on global economics, which basically focuses on trade development issues, investment issues. Before going there about a year and a half ago, I was the director for the trade department in the World Bank, okay. where I was responsible for basically advising and helping uh, basically deliver trade-related programs, um, basically countries around the world. Okay, what's your interest yeah. in global value chains? I got into global value chains basically when I was at the, at the World Bank, when it uh, was clear to me we were doing a lot of work on trade policy, we were doing a lot of work on competitiveness, trying to help countries kind of figure out how to increase their export, but also diversify exports. And then it becomes very clear that if you look at the various policy challenges and frictions that confront countries, that the value chain kind of framework is a very useful one to use in terms of identifying really what are the binding constraints in terms of kind of ramping up uh, the ability, not just of a country to export into the world market, but also the ability of firms to actually use the opportunities of the world trading system by connecting two value chains. So we were, um, I think one of the real advantages of this approach, um, which is of course very specific, but it can also be used to actually help identify from a broader perspective, what are the key policies that really make a big difference in terms of the ability of firms to enhance uh, their exports? Okay, what do you hope to learn from this week, uh, or this summit? The well, partly because there's a lot of people here who come from, well, we have academic, uh, people who have been very much involved in the research in this area, but we also have a lot of people from international organizations. So one of the things I hope to get out of the meeting is to get a sense of how the different organizations are, are using this concept or could be using this concept. Um, I mean, I sometimes think about the value chain kind of framework as a, you know, it's like an elephant. Uh, and people approach it from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people are very much focused on what happens to small holders, to small firms, mm -hmm. to workers. Other people have a much more macro perspective and saying really what we're trying to do is enhance the competitiveness of firms in a country generally and then you know so they use they, they approach these things in very different ways but but the value chain framework actually helps everybody so i'm trying to get it i think i'm hoping to get a much better sense of how people use the framework okay looking ahead to the next three or five years uh what do you think the challenges in the global that your institution will face that uh, the value chain framework might help you address well, I'm at a university, so we don't really have a big challenge, but in terms of the research we're doing and the type of work I'm involved in, in terms of helping um, people think through um, how to deal with some of the big policy challenges and priorities that exist now. So I'm based in Europe, I'm a European. The European Union right now is flat on its back, uh, very high debt levels, uh, co a competitiveness issue. So one of the ways out of that challenge is to actually increase net exports um, of the countries, of the deficit countries. And I think there we're focusing on how do services actually feed into the operation of, of these value chains, uh, which is something I think that has been relatively neglected okay. in the literature, but also to advise the European Commission and anybody who wants to listen uh, as to how you can actually design trade agreements in a better way to actually enhance the competitiveness of firms and achieve the growth and job creation objectives that the politicians are after. Where I think this value chain approach could really make a big difference in terms of identifying if you just think about the EU and the US. So much of this uh, analysis is between, is really focusing on developing countries. I think it applies just as much to industrialized countries. And I think there's quite a bit that can be done, and this is something I'm working on, is how can you design trade agreements to actually do a better job at dealing with the policy kind of reasons why firms are not able to, uh, to enhance their exports. So that's really one of the research areas I'm focused on. Okay, yeah, maybe just talk a little bit more about your re active yeah. research projects right now. Just yeah, so this, is, so this is one active area of research uh, for me and, and the team we have at the European University Institute. Uh, so to say, take the Canada, EU, you know, there, there's this comprehensive economic trade agreement which mm -hmm. has just been signed. So to get a better sense of how can we actually leverage these types of 21st century, you know, trade agreements, as they're sometimes called, to do a better job at uh, identifying and dealing with the real constraints that impede uh, export growth. And that's not just an issue of exports, it's also an issue of imports, mm -hmm. which is again where the value chain framework uh, helps a lot. So basically the, the approach is to try and identify how can you work with firms, with industry, 
to actually connect to the policymakers and to give the policymakers the information they need to say, okay, here we really have something that matters, uh, and we really should be focusing a lot less of our attention on these other things that we've been obsessing about, but which at the end of the day are not going to make a difference in terms of actually attracting investment, generating jobs, um, and so forth. So the, the premise of the research is that policymakers are very much stuck in silos, mm -hmm. right? So they're focused on customs valuation, or they're focused on you know, uh, standards, uh, or they're focused on what's going on in the transport sector, but they don't, they don't tie it together. Right? So one of the things we're trying to do is, is actually come up with mechanisms that will actually help kind of do that, which really has to revolve around bringing the private sector into this process, which is something that is a huge challenge, and that is really why it's interesting also to do the research on this. What are some, uh, some examples of those things that are obsessed over that you mentioned that maybe the, the um, value chain framework can frame in, in, in different ways? Uh, I think tariffs would be one example where you know a lot of the negotiating attention is still stuck on tariffs and trying to find a balance uh, in terms of, of tariff uh, concessions and, and liberalization. Which matters, but at the end of the day, if given an average tariff of 3%, you know, there isn't a whole lot there. So I think it's, you need to kind of shift a lot of that attention from traditional market access negotiations mm -hmm. to a focus on issues that really raise trade costs for firms much more. And that involves domestic regulation. It's, it's a complicated beast, obviously, certainly if you're a trade negotiator. But I think we need to help the trade negotiators and the economic policy makers actually focus on the things that actually create big dead weight losses, distortions. Um, so they're spending too much attention on things that we know as economists from all of the analysis we've done are not going to generate much in the way of big welfare gains and shift that attention towards areas where that will be done, uh, which are sometimes political taboos. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's our job to help identify you know, where the low-hanging fruit is that would make a big difference uh, in terms of economic impacts.